What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our College Football Channel. We continue here with our schedule preview and projected record series, the Duke Blue Devils. Up next, let's take a look at their schedule from last season. You know, this is a team that that I thought was better than their record, especially when Riley Leonard was in there and healthy. But they had a, they had a ton of tough schedule. I mean, they had to play Notre Dame in the non-conference. Uh, that obviously made it tough. They had to play Northwestern in the non-conference, a team that was you know, pretty good last year. And then you look at, they played Clemson, Florida State, Louisville, and North Carolina. They just, NC State as well. So they had a pretty tough schedule, but they were still able to finish eight and five, finish uh, seven and five in the regular season. This is the 2024 schedule. And let's start with the non-conference. A little bit easier this year, no, Notre Dame. They play Elon at Northwestern, at UConn, and at Middle Tennessee. It is interesting that they play at Middle Tennessee. They are playing a group of five team here on the road, and they'll have two road games in the non-conference, which means Duke will have six home games and six road games. Here are the home games in the ACC. They'll have North Carolina, Florida State, SMU, and Virginia Tech. All going to be big games. Uh, going to be tough. Going to be tough to win those games, but you know they do get them at home, so that'll help. And then you look at the road schedule in the ACC. It's at Georgia Tech, at Miami, at NC State, and at Wake Forest. So again. They wound up with a very tough draw in the ACC, just like last season. Now, no Notre Dame this year, but they still do have to play Florida State, Miami, NC State, North Carolina, uh, Virginia Tech, who's who on the rise, even SMU, who should be pretty good. Uh, they don't play Clemson, so that, that's a positive, and they don't play Louisville. So maybe it's a little bit easier than last season, but they start with Elon there on August the 30th, and it's a road game at Northwestern on September 7th, UConn on the 14th, and then on the road at Middle Tennessee on September 21st. So they play all four of their non-conference games in the first four weeks. Then they'll jump into conference play with North Carolina on September 28th, and it's on the road at Georgia Tech October 5th. October 18th, which is, I think, a Friday night, so they get a bye week after Georgia Tech, and then they play a Friday night game against Florida State. Perhaps they can pull off a big upset. We'll see. We, we know that that seems to happen on those Thursday, Friday night games. They play SMU on October 26th, and then it's on the road at Miami November 2nd at NC State on the 9th. So back-to-back -back road games there. And then they get their other bye week before playing Virginia Tech at home and close things out with Wake Forest on the road. So yeah, just looking at the schedule again. Non-conference is not too bad. Conference schedule, it could be worse. It could be worse. It's not horrible, but it's not easy either. And that's going to be tough with Miami and NC State back-to-back -back on the road there. But overall, pretty good balance on this schedule. Uh, let's get to the projections now. Last year's projection was 7-5. and five. I picked them to go 7-5. and five. They did go 7-5. and five. So everything lined up. Uh, the Avalon Sports Tournament actually at 8-4. and four. And the over-under was a little bit lower at just 6.5. So this team... Uh, was, again, about where they were expected to be last season. Of course, they shocked everyone beating Clemson in that, that first game of the season. I didn't pick that one, I don't think, but our simulation did have Duke beating Clemson, and a lot of people thought that was crazy, and it turned out to be true. Uh, so we'll get to the projections this year. Again, here's the scale that we use that we've done in all the videos, and we'll start with the easy wins. you got Elon. That should be an easy win. Look, I don't think Duke is going to be as good as they were last year, but I don't think they're going to completely fall off. I don't think they're going to be a bottom feeder in the ACC. They still have a decent amount of production coming back, and you bring in Malik Murphy from Texas at quarterback. So this team has a chance to be pretty good, uh, be a bowl team, I think. I don't think they're going to compete for an ACC championship, but we'll see what the new coaching staff looks like and how it all comes together. But, uh, yeah, I think they're still good enough to beat Elon easily. You look at UConn and Middle Tennessee, those are games where I think they are they should win. I think they'll be double-digit favorites in both of those games, but not guaranteed wins. Again, UConn's not bad at the group of five level. Middle Tennessee uh, playing them on the road. So that's why I've got those games in the blue. And then we've got Northwestern, Florida State, Miami, and NC State. All these games are going to be tough. Uh, you know, maybe Northwestern should be a 50-50 game. Uh, but I think you could also argue Georgia Tech in the yellow. So, you know, if you flip those games around or whatever, either way you want to do it. Um, I think these are the games where Duke will be about a touchdown underdog. Uh, Florida State, Miami, and NC State, maybe it's seven or eight points. Northwestern, maybe it's six. But still, I think they'll be uh, a pretty clear underdog in these games, but not by a lot. And then you've got a bunch of 50-50 games. And so you get a projection of six and six. So, Again, when we average everything out, you do get a six and six projection. So if they, 
you know, if they win these games in the green and the blue, and then they go three and two in the 50-50 games, that's enough to get to six and six. Or if they go two and three in the 50-50 games, and they lose or win one of these games in the yellow. So, you know, there are different ways you can get there. But six and six is a projection. I think that's very fair. Uh, I think that's probably the goal for Duke this year. Maybe they proved me wrong. Maybe there's enough coming back that, that they can kind of build off of what they did last year. But just with the coaching change, I just I think six and six is probably a pretty fair projection. Would love to get your thoughts. What do you think about Duke? Give me your projections down in the comments below.